is it in this court document where it's where Murdoch was telling them to go get the money from the Satterfield family? Alex Murdoch. Alex Murdoch makes it back on the news again because now apparently Alex Murdoch, well, we already all knew this, but Alex Murdoch is like, hey, by the way, guys, I might have lied about Gloria Satterfield. Yeah, I might have lied about her falling and tripping over my dog because I wanted to collect some insurance and I wanted to keep it for myself. And uh, he finally admits to lying about that. But, you know, we all watched the uh, we all watched the trial and we knew what a liar this guy is. Nautilus issued umbrella policy um, to Murdoch, the policy providing five million in umbrella coverage to Murdoch subject to his policy terms. I don't remember if he got the five million or if it was like four million. I don't know why four million stick with me or like maybe three million. Oh, my God. There are so many facts in this case that I it's already been a couple of months. That I don't remember. OK, um, on February 2nd, 2018, Gloria Satterfield fell. She died, however, a couple of weeks later, February, February 26th in 2018. Um, I believe she fell and then she was, it seems like she was, she never really gained conscience and uh, she ended up dying in the hospital. 12, Murdoch made a claim for the coverage under the policy with regards to claims against him purportedly on behalf of the state of Ms. Satterfield. Immediately following Gloria Satterfield's fall on February 2nd, 2018, Murdoch rushed to the scene arriving before, oh, he, oh, he actually did. I was actually wondering um, when Alex Murdoch actually got to the scene because I, to my understanding, he wasn't there. It was Paul that was there and it was Maggie that were there. And then they were the ones that called 911, right? And then people were saying that like, well, Alex Murdoch was the one that concocted this, you know, fell over the dog thing. But it was like, well, Alex Murdoch wasn't there. So now we know based on this that Alex Murdoch, I guess he arrived before EMS. And maybe that's when he was trying to get his story together. So he's like, oh my God, this is an opportunity for me to collect money. On March 29, 2018, Murdoch stated that Ms. Satterfield briefly regained consciousness, during which time she stated that Murdoch's dog had caused her to fall. The statement was heard by no one else and is contradicted by Ms. Satterfield's later statement to hospital staff that she had no idea what made her fall. Oh, so she did gain consciousness at some point, And then she told the hospital staff she had no idea how she fell. B. On March 29, 2018, Murdoch claimed Ms. Satterfield was at his property, not to perform work for Murdoch and his family, but to collect a check for work performed for something else. Hi, David. Oh, David, welcome to the Discord, by the way. I saw that you joined the Discord. So it was not there to perform work for the Murdoch and his family, but to collect a check for work performed for something else. Oh, thus avoiding a worker's compensation defense. Oh my God, this guy is so, I don't want to use the word smart, but this guy is so slimy. Interesting. Oh man, he really knew the ins and the outs. <laughs> so she went there not to work, but she was there to do something else, collecting money. And then that's why he didn't have to do the worker's comp thing. Jesus. Okay, so see, Murdoch stated to multiple third parties in Hampton County that he was liable for Gloria Satterfield's fall and ultimate death and admission again interest that all but the insured that there could be no challenge to the liability and securing his ability to force Nautilus to contribute settlement funds that Murdoch and his co-conspirators stole. All right, let's get to what Murdoch's attorneys, let's get to what Murdoch's attorneys filed. This was filed recently on May 1st of, <laughs> this was filed three days ago. <laughs> was it Jim Griffin? Was it Harpoolian? Who filed this? Mr. Barber, maybe? Admits the allegation of 10 through 12. So 10 through 12 is that he got the uh, $5 million umbrella policy. Gloria Satterfield fell. fell. She died on the this date. Um, that Murdoch made a claim for the coverage. Okay. D. Defendant admits the paragraph 14D insofar as he was not a bona fide insured seeking coverage because he invented the critical facts giving rise to a purported liability covered by the Nautilus insurance policy. And he acted to assist the Satterfield estate succeed in the claim of those facts, which the representative of the Satterfield estate believe were true. Defendant does not recall the details of what the letter had appeared on the correspondence for five years ago. Darth, um, the allegation that Fleming and Murdoch were effectively co-counsel is not a factual allegation, but rather a vague editorial comment requiring no answer. And to the extent an answer is required, defendant does not know what is meant by the statement and therefore denies it. Defendant admits the allegation in for paragraph 14E. Um, what is 14E? 
14E, Murdoch pressured Nautilus to settle the claim, threatening a suit for bad faith against Nautilus if it refused to pay policy limits. Okay, he denies that. Um, F, admits the allegations in paragraph 14F, insofar as it alleges, the, <laughs> it alleges, defendant demanded Nautilus to pay his full policy limits and the defendant threatened to admit liability at trial. Defendant does not know what is meant by the allegation that he was abusive towards the Nautilus adjuster and therefore ad denies the allegation. Sure, Alex. Sure, you don't. Sure, sure, sure. Murdoch. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Please don't tell me that's what they call him in jail. <laughs> Love letters from whom? Uh, what do you call those people again? That like, um, there's a term that you call for people who have like a really weird and severe love connection with people who committed crimes or in jail. Psychos. <laughs> now there's another word for them. <laughs> la, 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 la. Hybristophilia. Hib hybrist Hi, Richter. How are you doing today? Hybristophilia. 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 Yes, these are hybristophiliacs. Chris Watts had a couple of these hypersophiliacs too. Because when Chris Watts was in jail, oh no, I actually, okay, we actually read those letters and those are pretty bad. It's like, Chris, I know you didn't do it. Chris, I know you love your family. You would never do it. And you're only admitting to it because of the pressures or something like that. And there was one that was like, Chris, your wife treated you horribly and pretty much like blamed the wife and it's like saying that she got what she deserved or something and that she shouldn't have treated him that way. And then like, I don't know, it's just like, it's just. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't read any of the Alex Murdoch ones, but mm -hmm. sure, sure, sure. Denies that Corey Fleming or any person at Moss and Coon PA had knowledge that the forged account receiving the funds were controlled by the defendant. Defendant admits attorney fees were deducted from the disbursement, but does not recall the exact amount of fees. Fleming, Fleming, Fleming. But Corey Fleming was, um, I believe, wasn't he the one that went on the, um, when Alex Murdoch came in for a police interview and Corey Fleming was the, was he the lawyer that was with him? Where I was like, oh man, the lawyer, the lawyer should have told him to get the heck out of there. Oh yeah, it is Corey Fleming. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was Corey Fleming. Oh, Corey Fleming, a fellow attorney, Alex Murdoch's friend was in the room for this interview. Fleming said, maybe I'm mistaken. I thought we were here to get an update on the case. I'm not comfortable with you asking Alex questions as a suspect. Yeah, Corey Fleming should have been like, Alex, get the heck out of there. Just get him out of there. Because, you know, Alex Murdoch, you know, he had to play it like, oh, I want to be here. I want to give them information. I want to be helpful to the case. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all that Alex Murdoch BS. But like Corey Fleming should have dragged his butt out of there. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I, I did get the mixed up. So Russell Lafitte was the one that wanted a new trial. He's the one that's already been through trial. And he was like, oh, Alex Murdoch, my friend right there on his murder trial said that I wasn't involved, that I didn't know anything. And so therefore, I shouldn't be in trouble. No dogs were involved in the fall of Gloria Satterfield on Mar February 2nd, 2018. So that's a big one right there. Because he said that Alex Murdoch was like, yeah, um, Gloria Satterfield, she, she, tripped, she tripped over one of my dogs. Um, I wonder if he, I wonder if he blamed it on Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. After Miss Satterfield's death, defendant invented Miss Satterfield's purported statement that dogs had caused her to fall to force his insurers to make a settlement payment. And he stated that she was not on the property to perform work. B, defendant admits the allegation to paragraph 17C, except the defendant denies the existence of any conspiracy to improperly cause Nautilus to pay a fraudulent claim. Man, I wonder if, um, do you guys know if at any point, has there been any record of Maggie or Paul saying that Gloria tripped on the dog? Or do you think that Alex didn't tell Maggie and Paul to lie and that he kind of just did everything on his own on the offside and Paul and Maggie didn't know anything about this whole dog tripping thing? Oh, man. Because I wonder when they were still alive, I wonder if the tripping on the dog thing became um, like news. And if they were like, yo, Alex, like, what the hell? Like, what? Did you, did you say that Gloria tripped on dogs? What? Oh, I'm just waiting from the head. Yeah. Hi, KK. Um, how old is she? I'm not sure, like 58 maybe. Do you know if she fell from standing or not? No. No. Where'd she fall from? Uh, from the, uh, she fell going up the steps, up the brick steps. Okay, so she had better inside. Okay, so she fell going up the brick steps. So it seems like 
Maggie knows what happened. Um, and then I want to see what Paul says. Hello? Yeah, can, can you ask the patient what kind of pain she's having? Ma'am, she can't talk. Okay, do you know... She's cracked her head and there's blood on the concrete and she's bleeding out of her left ear. Okay, she's bleeding out of her ear? And out of her head. She's cracked her skull. Okay. Jesus, out. All right, the other lady said that she had tried to stand up and fell down again? No, she, I was holding her up. And okay. She told me to turn her loose and she was trying to use her arm, but then she fell back over. Okay, do you guys know who she is? Yes, yeah, she works for us. Okay, do you know if she's ever had a stroke or anything before? Ma'am, can you stop asking her this question? I already, have have them on the way. I already have them on the way. Me asking questions does not slow them down. Yeah, I mean, we don't really like Maggie and Paul's attitude on this 911 call. Um, but, you know, maybe when they're really stressed out, they just tend to lash out on people or something like that. We don't like the tone either, but um, I get it. You know, it's it's a tough one because like, people did say that, like, Paul really did love Gloria. And maybe he's just really frustrated because, like, is, 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 are the cops coming or what? Like, hello? Like, well, do you have paramedics coming over? So I don't know. Some people do get agitated like this. Um, yeah. Not in any way. These are relevant questions that I have to ask for the ambulance. One of my questions is, has she ever had a stroke? I don't believe she's ever had a stroke, not that I know Okay. That. Okay, is she able to talk to you guys at all, or is she unconscious now? She's not unconscious, she's just mumbling. Okay. I believe she's maybe hit her head and had, maybe has a concussion or something. Okay. Maybe. Do you know what her name is? Gloria Satterfield. You said Sanderfield? Ma'am? You said Sanderfield? Satterfield. Satterfield. Okay, what's the house look like out there? It's Sorry, I'm laughing because when she was trying to, like, repeat back the last name, I feel like Paul was just really annoyed. <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to listen to it again because I just wanted to refresh to see if like um, they ever mentioned Gloria Satterfield telling them what happened. But it seems like I, I can't tell if they saw what happened. But Maggie did say that she was going up the steps and she fell. Um, seems like Paul didn't see what happened. But um, yeah, I always wondered when did Alex, how did Alex say that he knew what happened? So Alex apparently rushed back home before the paramedics got there, okay, rushed back home and he probably concocted the story really quick. And then he was like, yeah, you know, um, before the paramedics got there, Gloria Satterfield told me and only me, no one else around that uh, she tripped on the dogs. Yeah, she tripped on the dogs. Um, so that's why he can get the insurance payment, right? And then also that he was like, well, Gloria Satterfield, she wasn't working at the time for me. She came to pick up a check or something. She came for something else. That's why they didn't have to pay for the workers comp. So <laughs> slimy dude. Got a slimy dude over here. Defendant admits his actions were reprehensible and that he misused vulnerable persons who trusted him. However, it is hyperbole to claim that stealing money from insurance companies is depravity without the precedence of Western jurisprudence. Defendant did state that Miss Satterfield was not on the property at the time of her fall to perform work for the defendant. He does not recall, however, why she was there that day over five years ago and therefore denies the allegations of paragraph 22C. Well, the only other person they can ask, Maggie, Paul, but you know what? They're not here anymore. It's like the only words that we can rely on now because Maggie's gone, Paul is gone, Gloria's gone. It's like the only words you have to rely on is Bubba and Alex Murdoch. Defendant admits that his conduct was immoral, unethical, oppressive, and or offensive to public policy. Um, Plaintiff has failed to join necessary parties under da 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 da. Eric Bland, Ronnie Richter, Bland Richter, Tony Satterfield, individually in his capacity as a personal representative of the state of Gloria Satterfield, and Brian Harriet. Where's the part that it says that? Um, is it in this court document where it's? where Murdoch was telling them to go get the money from the Satterfield family uh, individually and in his capacity as a personal representative of the state of Gloria Satterfield and Brian Harriet has recovered over 7.5 million by means of action in South Carolina court of common pleas for Hampton County. Based on the allegations, the defendant converted a payment from Nautilus that should have been paid over to the Satterfield estate. Oh, if Nautilus never should have made any of the payment to the Satterfield estate and only attempted to do so because it was a victim of fraud, then the parties in possession of a recovery of the money allegedly stolen from Nautilus 
or necessary parties to an action by Nautilus for recovery of that money because A, the court cannot accord complete relief among the existing parties in their absence, and B, those persons and entities claim an interest relating to the subject of the action. Their absence will leave existing parties subject to the substantial risk of incurring double, multiple, or otherwise inconsistent obligation because of that interest. Yeesh. Man. I feel bad for the Satterfield family. Leave them alone. <laughs> Just leave them alone, man. They don't want to be selected to any of this. Jesus. <laughs> 